It's time for another wrestling podcast. All right, all right, all right. Are you fucking kidding me? Guys, I got blocked again on Twitter. I'm your mark of marks. That's the most reliable source on the interwebs. The social assassin at your disposal, bitches. All right, all right, all right. Guys, another wrestling podcast, episode 249. I am Credo, the Mark of Marks. And I'm the social assassin, Angry Cooter, at your disposal, bitches. And I. Um, sorry, I haven't done this for a while. Um, I'm Jonathan Benjamin, the interviewer of the stars. Well, yeah. Wow. wow. This uh, is historical, Credo. Me and JP have never worked together live on air. Never? Listen, never. Listen, we've I've... always just been like two passing ships in the night and when he came back you know he just specifically started doing interviews again and i'm like yo man we gotta get this boy on live to see if he can hang with the big boys but you know what he can hang we know jb can hang bro L- listen i've heard good things and uh <laughs> i wanted to hop on and uh and see what what i could mess up tonight there you go i could have swore he was on with all of us that one time when he came back i don't know I think it was a was a brief intro just to say hi, you know. But I, I don't know if he did the episode. Oh, you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, maybe you know maybe a full episode. I don't know. Well, yeah, either it's way, the first it's history. Full episode. How about the first episode of me, you, and Jonathan minus Mike? So, Mike's in parts unknowns this week. So, uh, either way, you got the the triple threat going this week, guys. Uh, one, you got the OG Jonathan Benjamin of uh, AWP sitting in with us, guys. Uh, stay tuned though, because Vicky Guerrero is going to sit down with JB and myself, uh, and we're going to talk to her a little bit on on webcam. Uh, this is a uh, this is a new uh, a new step for us, uh, Jonathan. Right? We got her on cam this week. Yeah, I uh, I couldn't believe it. She was by far one of the best interviews that we've. I, I mean, I think we've ever had. She was just in, incredible, and uh, I can't wait to. Maybe talk to her in the future. No, for sure. But let's get into it, guys. I mean, we had a crazy weekend. Uh, NXT Portland happened. Everybody, I think the, the one saying you have to go by is death, taxes, and NXT takeovers will always be amazing. I don't think, you know, it, 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 that has to be a saying, right? I mean, this is, it's fact by now. I mean, NXT puts on amazing shows and they never leave anybody unhappy i don't know cooter how was i mean everybody enjoyed it there's not one negative thing to say you know there's usually that one match that people are like you know it was all right but every single match was really enjoyable and for all those who say that aew has that better feel because they do the full arenas and and their lighting is better and nxt is dark and in full sale these are the shows that we really look forward to because I don't think that audience in that studio does NXT justice. And I think to get the full rep- representation of what that brand really is all about, when they do these live takeovers, man, it's just incredible. And there's no show that tops it. And, uh, I mean, I'm going to hop in here. This this show, from top to bottom, there wasn't a like a dud match. You know, that... The only thing I'll say, and this is something that we just, I guess, kind of live with nowadays in in professional wrestling, but, you know, there it seems as if there is no one move that will put anybody down. And I don't know if we talk about if we'll talk about this or dive deeper into it, but you know, used to you see a super kick thrown by HBK and that was it, you know, mm. and uh, maybe you see a pile driver DDT and those were pretty, you know, so it's it's tough sometimes seeing that because. Um, it, it just gets a little a little much for me, but I will say I'm a huge fan of everybody that was on the on the show and uh, watching the first match, the Keith Lee and Dijak, as we know, um, it's, it was a it was it's hard hitting, but it almost seemed to me like the match was in slow motion, and I don't want to I don't want to say that that was like necessarily a bad thing, but then. 
you know, watching the matches that followed that, it just everything seemed to be like a much quicker pace. But uh, I'm telling you, the just top to bottom, like you guys are saying, it was just uh, it was a great show. No, I, I hear you what you mean on that slow motion thing, and I think it's it's a it's a weird combo because you never have two big guys who move at a different pace than other big guys. I mean, like Brock Lesnar is a whole different story. If you think of guys like Big Show or Kane or Undertaker, the way they move, it's different. But, I mean, Dijakovic, Dijak, and uh, Keith Lee, big guys doing things that big guys normally don't do. It's different. It's what's definitely needed. What I really like about that matchup is they fly like the cruiserweights, but they also show their power. Like, probably one of my favorite spots is right at the beginning of that match where uh, Lee was outside of the ring, and basically Dijak, did that backflip outside to the outside of the ring. And it was, it's like, it was like a spinning type of the, whatever. And Lee just catches him in that power bomb position. And the look on the, the way they sold it, like Lee was with his, yeah, that that's not happening. And, and Dijakovic looked like, and he's about to shit his pants because Lee caught him in that power bomb position, just incredible athleticism. And, to see them be able to have the best of both worlds to me is, is amazing. And like I said last week, as oftentimes if I've seen these two wrestled, I mean, they do a lot of, the, not a lot of the same spots, but they have spots that they like doing with each other. No two matches to me look the same. Hmm. You know what I mean? I think the biggest surprise was, I think we all kind of said that uh, the Undisputed Era was kind of going to lose all their championships this weekend, but Adam Cole... Maybe he held on to it this week, guys, and that's why I'm uh, I'm kind of scratching my head because I thought maybe I know we're kind of close to WrestleMania and then another takeover that week, but I mean I don't know I thought they were gonna move it off of him, but uh, not. Um, and a little Johnny Gargano, I don't know, is it a heel turn? I mean he was kind of going back and forth a little bit, I guess, but uh, I don't know. I mean uh, one guy. Has remain is remaining with the gold in the undisputed era. But uh, what did you think of that match, guys? I think that what's crazy about it is that it's just great storytelling, and we talk a lot about how in the world of professional wrestling these days there's not a lot of long storylines, and this is kind of something that's been a constant for us for a while. You know, Adam Cole has been feuding with a lot of people and it really is kind of tying this up and I don't mind anything. I, you know, I like the, the Gargano and Tomasa part of it. I like the Adam Cole part of it. I like the undisputed era part of it. Um, you know, I think that Gargano, believe it or not, I think he's going to be best as kind of that like smarmy little heel. Um, I think that that's really his, his best thing. I don't really, I love that he loves to go to Disneyland and be with his 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 wife and all that stuff. But like, don't bring that into the ring. Be the kind of like evasive mm-hmm. chicken shit heel that I think that that's the best thing he can do. To be honest. Yeah, I I agree with him one hundred percent when it comes to that. I think he's going as far as he can in NXT as a face, and it's the perfect time for a heel turn. Uh, even piggybacking off of what JB said earlier. The whole no move is going to put somebody down thing. I've had this argument with Cologne over and over, especially when it came to matches with like um, Omega and Okada. How many times are you going to kick out of people's finishers? That's the one thing about these type of matches that just too many false finishes that involve the finisher. You know, that's the one thing that that really drives me nuts. And... uh, I feel like they, this pay-per-view sets up the Mania card because I think you're going to finally have that Ciampa Gargano blow-off match, which was probably supposed to happen last year at Mania before Ciampa got hurt. And I think that this is going to set up Adam Cole and Finn Balor for, uh, a main, if not a Mania matchup, you know, uh, the title matchup for TakeOver at WrestleMania then. So, yeah. No, and I, You mentioned that, though, too, and I'm, I'm trying to think because... You have Charlotte Flair challenging Rhea Ripley for the NXT Championship as of now. Anybody else can be added to it, right? But uh, that's going to be a Mania match. But meanwhile, the night before, you have another takeover. 
I thought we were almost at the point to where maybe we could start mixing in some NXT guys onto the main roster too, where I, I guess we're going to get one at least, maybe two, but it, it's almost like, do we need the takeover before still, before Mania? Or, I mean, we had eight hours of WrestleMania. Can't we just scrap some stupid matches and put the best of the best on there from all three brands? I will say this. I'm old school in the sense that I, I still love professional wrestling. So I know that that's something that's that's strange <laughs> and is a foreign concept to a lot of people listening today. <laughs> Do you remember a time? Pepperidge Farms remembers. But anyway, um, <laughs> there's this thing that happens. And, you know, Mania Weekend brings out the best of the best, not only for WWE, but all the local promotions that come down there to, to put on these amazing shows. And I'm almost concerned that NXT may outshine WrestleMania this year. And not because I don't like the performers who are going to be performing at WrestleMania. I mean, we're almost guaranteed to get an Edge Orton match. I mean, that right there in 2020, I'm saying that. That's insane. Take my um, money, please. Yeah, really. So so to, to know that, but then to know that what we're talking about right now, and I'm going to go out on a limb and say it right now. Um, in the beginning, I didn't really know what my stance on Bianca Belair was, but, I mean, she's proven over and over after the, the Royal Rumble, after this last TakeOver match, I mean, she's really the MVP, the EST of NXT, and uh, I mean, I'm super excited. And that's my point, is I just don't know that it's worth it, because it's always going to be compared against WrestleMania and vice versa. So after the dust settles, no matter who walks out, and let's let's be honest, possibly Drew McIntyre in the main event... Um, it's going to maybe not stand the test of time to the the card the night before. So I think they would do themselves a favor. I know it's a huge week and all that stuff, but look, we got to just talk and kind of mull over NXT right now, but just imagine what we have to do, you know, whenever we have the WrestleMania hangover and we're talking about NXT, WrestleMania. It's just, in my opinion, it's too much. It's too many good shows all right at once and i think that probably in the future maybe they'll they'll decide to kind of part ways with it i really think it would be best for everybody yeah i like the fact that we're still going to get a takeover i i wouldn't mind them moving you know if they're going to have a, a match between valor and cole to the main mania card because i think nxt is so flush with talent and they only usually do five to six matches on a takeover that it gives the opportunity to put more Star power, well, not star power, but more under people, a chance to perform at WrestleMania weekend. And I think that's important. And I think if you put those championship matches on the main WrestleMania card, it, it shines a little light onto that third, you know, up and coming brand that, that, that really needs a little bit more showcasing. Because when you look at it, you had all the SmackDown guys and the, and the Raw guys when they were doing the whole Survivor Series angles and it was just shedding that light on NXT and they were doing much better in the ratings. I think if people see the talent from NXT on a grander stage, it's nothing but good press for NXT. No, guys. Uh, it, it, it's like I said in the beginning, death, taxes, and NXT takeovers being amazing. It's a guarantee in life. Uh, I mean, it, this is the time, though. This is the time to, for any wrestling fan to be excited. And you said it, JB. You know, it, it is a rarity for actual a wrestling fan to actually like what they lo like wrestling, being a fan. That's the whole point of being a fan is and like it and enjoy it. And, you know, as uh, Marks, we always nitpick and whatnot, and there's a lot of people online, whether it's the trolls or the keyboard warriors behind it, uh, talking shit on Facebook or Twitter or whatnot. <laughs> We've seen a lot of those lately. Seen a lot of them, uh, a lot of stuff. But, you know, at the end of the day, you got to take a step back and realize how amazing last year was and this year is just to be a fan of wrestling i mean we've seen so many things returns uh what do you call them um just the matchups of dream matches or whatnot of things that are happening it's just it's an incredible time because i mean if you go back 10 years it's definitely not even on the level of what it is today or let alone five years ago so it's definitely changing at a rapid pace but for the good so i guess i don't know some people forget that but at the same time 
I do understand where they're coming from sometimes, but you know, it's okay to hate some things, but I mean, some people are just ridiculous. Excuse me, but we have the Vicky Guerrero joining us right now. I see, I, I see what you did there. I see, I know. It's, uh, excuse me, excuse me. All right, welcome everybody to another wrestling podcast. Uh, this week, I'm blessed to have some amazing people with me. Uh, I've been doing a lot of the interviews lately, but we have Credo with us tonight, uh, your your Mark father, and we have another special guest, but, uh, oh. Excuse you, what? I, I, I'm here, Jonathan, but, uh, excuse me? What? Ex- excuse, excuse me? I don't, I don't know. Excuse me! <laughs> Ladies! Line, guys. That's all I got. That is mine. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you haven't figured out by now, we have the incredible, the amazing Vicky Guerrero joining us tonight. It is, I mean, this is, um, this is a dream come true. Absolutely. I'm, I'm not a loss for words often, but tonight really is uh, incredible. And we just want to thank you so much for coming on and joining us tonight. Oh my gosh, you guys are so sweet. Where were y'all when I needed friends on, when I was on the big stage? <laughs> No, but well, thank you. I'm, I'm honored to be here with you guys tonight. Well, you yourself are doing your very own podcast right now. Excuse me, the Vicky Guerrero show. So let's get right into it. How's it been in the podcasting world? How do you like going over and kind of and having your own format to talk to people? Gosh, you know, I love doing the research. I love learning about people and everything about them. Uh, I have to give a lot of credit to Jerry because he's taught me how to go along the way. I didn't do this before. So when Jerry said, hey, you want to do a podcast? I'm like, no. <laughs> I mean, because, you know, I'm, I've always been involved with being interview but not being an interviewee so um i love it i've had some great guests and i think you guys can relate that you always worry about content you're always like okay who's next and who's next and can they can they make it and all the scheduling conflicts so i think that's like the low of the podcast world but um when everything works out it's a great week No, yeah, for sure. Now, uh, we mentioned, uh, you know, you have a, a, a legacy in the wrestling world, but a, a legacy of being one of the most hated characters in wrestling. Uh, how do you think you were able to achieve that? And uh, uh, how, do, how do you feel about having that high honor of being hated in the wrestling world? Because it is a true honor to be one of the most hated people. Oh, thank you. Um, <laughs> you know, I think I was hated when I first started just because people thought of me as Eddie's wife, you know, why am I there? And I had a lot of shoes to fill. And the first and foremost person I wanted to make Eddie proud because this was his legacy that he left behind. Um, But I think watching him a lot and kind of being involved with, um, you know, his character and always being around him, I learned, I didn't know I was learning things until he, he passed. And then I was like, Oh my gosh, I get it now. <laughs> like when he would do certain things, but um, I love being a heel. They tried me as a baby, and it was actually really boring. I, you know, when the when Vince and Johnny Ace were like, "Do you like being a baby?" and I'm like, "No, I want to be what Eddie was. I want to be the bad guy." And I love it. You know, I love getting the the audience in the palm of my hand, and you know, being nice. And I love taking that switch on them, and they go home just pissed off at me. And I think that was just a, such a high for me that um, it was something I look forward to every night that I got to perform. Well, and speaking of Eddie's legacy and also your legacy, um, we know in the world of wrestling, it comes out all the time. People talk about how much Eddie influenced, um, it, you know, even today, Peyton Royce, we've got Sasha Banks. They're constantly, you know, giving nods to Eddie. Um, it, it, does it feel strange to you that, especially with the network and other things like that, that your legacy may be creating all new people that want to become you someday? Do you feel like a, a yes. tense... <laughs> I mean, that's got to be, it's got to make you feel good whether or not they're getting into it to be a heel or not. But you, you yourself are, are inspiring people these days. Gosh, you are so sweet. I'm going to start blushing. Um, <laughs> you know, I think, I think it's important in this industry. And I tell, you know, I just finished going to AEW and I worked with the girls and I interviewed the girls as well. And they, I think it's important that we all share our knowledge Because back then when I was, you know, starting out, a lot of people were my mentors and they gave me a lot of advice and a lot of education, especially like Edge and Dolph, you know, when they gave me pointers, 
I really took those seriously. And that's something that I always wanted to share with the next woman or guy that I worked with was, you know, just sharing the knowledge and um, making them feel good and comfortable like I did. And so, um, yeah, you know, when people say, you know, I want to be just like you, I'm like, oh, no, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, I know where they're coming from. And I'm very grateful about that. And, you know, if I ever get to, uh, you know, perform again, um, I will also, you know, share the knowledge. But then also, I think you have to keep your heart open in this business because there's always something to learn. And times are always changing with storylines and characters and how the, the product flows. And I think it's just important for everyone to always keep their heart open and their mind and be open to learn new ideas. Sure. Uh, and you mentioned Edge. Uh, I know one of the biggest things they say in pro wrestling is never say never. But for <laughs> what happened with Edge, and I know you, you recently talked a little bit about it on your your show, Excuse Me, the Vicky Guerrero Show, downloaded on all uh, podcast platforms, everybody. Uh, Woo, but, thank you. <laughs> another cheap pop right there. So, uh, But, I mean, something with, with Edge, and then it also happened with Daniel Bryan not too long ago, too, to where – these guys retired. These guys, you know, ended their career. But now, I mean, with the advancements in medical technology and whatever else, these guys are getting a second chance. What was your initial uh, reaction when you heard that he returned? I mean, it, it was been nine years pretty much now, right? Yeah, you know, when Edge did his big retirement speech, you know, that's when we were still together. And it was heartbreaking because I – that was my guy that, you know, that was our, our stick, you know, to go out there um, and to see him come back. You know, I'll, of course, when he was on my show, I don't think he knew he was coming back or if he did, he didn't tell me, which I still have a beef with him to talk about. But, um, you know, to see the Royal Rumble and to watch it and to see Edge come back, I was I actually got teary eyed because this man works so hard, you know, to um for his legacy and to and to realize that it stopped without his decision was really heartbreaking for everyone around him to accept. So, um, you know, with medical technology and the guys, you know, kind of doing things differently and getting themselves, you know, I guess recovered, you know, I think it's amazing, you know, that this is happening and these guys can come back and, you know, keep on working. So you mentioned that you just went to AEW and you were helping give back to those uh, those women. And, um, you know, you were with the WWE for 10 years and I, you know, you off and on and even longer. But the bulk of your time was that that 10 year decade period, which is an, an incredible feat. But we were starting to see then the rise of the the women and, and their new role in, in wrestling. Um, do you think that there's much more that they can do. Uh, I mean, they, they've main evented WrestleMania. We've done like, is it just, I, I do you feel that it's just, um, I don't want to say that it's like leveled off, but do you think that they're finally on a le level playing field as far as wrestling goes? Well, you know, that's a good point because, uh, you know, we had the first women's Royal rumble and then there was evolution. And then they, you know, the main, they may many vented, you know, WrestleMania and it's almost like, in my opinion, that it was so fast that we didn't get a chance to really enjoy those moments because it was like one after the other, the women were, you know, headlining and getting their own pay-per-views and which is amazing. And it's so incredible that they get the opportunity. But now, like, you know, I look back now, it's like, what is there left for them to do? Because now they can still continue their legacies of main, main eventing in WrestleMania. And you see Charlotte Flair and, um, you know, Oscar, like just doing incredible jobs on the show. I, I guess like the next thing you wonder is like, you know, do they make it like an all female, you know, wrestling show or do they, you know, have their own network? It's like, there's not too many things I can think of and I could be wrong of what else there is for them to do. Like you said. And um, I kind of shared that thought with someone the other day because they, they gave these women the opportunity really fast, and now it's like we sit here going, okay, what's next? You know? mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's um, I wish it would have kind of just kind of slowed down where we could enjoy each moment and kind of let that, you know, soak in. But, you know, um, that's the way it worked out. But it's always exciting that now they have more opportunities on pay-per-views and with WrestleMania coming up. And then other products, having women, you know, do exciting things. I think it's it's fun to watch, and I'm really proud of all the women. Sure. Uh, now, uh, 2019 was a big year for pro wrestling, especially with the launch of AEW. Uh, do you feel, I think a lot of the wrestling fans love it to where 
it's that you know it, it's the, the the other choice you know it's more variety it's not just the same company <laughs> putting on the same show or you know multiple shows but giving the the, the wrestling audience that other you know that other choice to, to pick from do you think you know aew uh, from what they've been doing has been a, a great uh, has, has it been a great step in the right way for competition if you will for just away from WWE? Yeah, you know, first, you know, to add to that thought, I think that any kind of promotion that's opposite of WWE is good for business because it gives everyone that competition and it keeps everyone on their toes. Uh, You know, you have NWA and Impact and New Japan Pro Wrestling and, you know, AEW. Uh, There's so many exciting, you know, products that are happening. I think it's great for the fans because they do have a choice. Um, You know, but as far as, uh, you know, What's true to AEW, and I've gone to see this backstage and to talk to everyone, is that they're just being themselves. They're doing what they can do. They're not trying to, you know, out, you know, do WWE. WWE does have, they're established and they're the main guys on the block. But AEW is proving that because of what they know and do, they're they're succeeding each week. And the ratings are getting better and they get the roster and it's getting better and better. Like last night's show was just incredible. And so I think that, you know, you can't compare them yet because they just started and we have to give them a chance. But when I see them and I see them each week and I see the evolution that they're making, I think it's just incredible that, you know, Cody and Tony Khan and Brandy and um, all the agents, they're really just pulling together and valuing the superstars and letting them be who they want to be. And I think that says a lot. Um, you know, in their schedule, you know, they work one day out of the week and then they have the pay-per-view, you know, once every three months. I think that says a lot because the guys can rest and you see these guys backstage that I used to work with and they don't have like the, you know, the tired eyes and they're resting and they can spend time with their families. And I think that when they have that, then it really shows in their performance and they're having a good time out there. So I, there is a quite a bit of difference, you know, with the scheduling of WWE and AEW. Um, I like that schedule of AEW. You know, I, I go back there and I get excited. I'm like, God, I would love to do this, you know. So, I mean, I'm excited for them and they've worked hard and they have they have a lot to prove and they have a lot of work to do. But um, you got to start somewhere. And from what I've seen, I'm a big fan and I'm rooting them on every week. Now, we see in the background there's uh, some Vicky Guerrero merch that we have back <laughs> there. Some, some really amazing uh, memorabilia. I am the proud owner of the Excuse Me Vicky Guerrero shirt. I will be honest. I I have that currently. Um, what did it feel like to me? That's like that's how you know you made it. Like you know, <laughs> I, I'm sure I'm sure everybody's different. You know, maybe the first time they they wrestled at the Garden or or whatever. But for me, the merchandise is really where it. it so. How did it feel to see that, you know, a T-shirt, you know, Eddie had probably a million of them and, and action <laughs> figures and all of that. So how did it personally feel for you whenever you you saw, because I'm sure that you're part of that process, right? Like you, they bring you the mock-ups or how does well, that work? In WWE, I wasn't. If anything, I kept begging them to get me a shirt. And, and what they came up with, I wasn't really excited about. And actually, they only kept it online for like a month or two. And so... That was kind of the politics, too, that I went through with WWE because, you know, some guys would have two, three, four shirts. And, you know, and even Edge and Dolph and Michelle and McCool were like, man, like, you need a shirt. And I'm like, oh, no, no, don't worry about it. You know, but then, you know, I, I started thinking, I, I started seeing my, you know, what my character was doing. And I'm like, yeah, I do want a shirt. I, that would really mean a lot. But I have more shirts now than I did with WWE because Pro Wrestling Tees makes them, which I'm very grateful for. But I think my my biggest um, accomplishment was uh, getting my first doll. I think that was something that, you know, I was really proud of. And I got to make four with WWE. And I love the opportunity that they gave me, you know, to have that. So, yeah, I think when a doll and you go, especially when you go to Walmart or Walgreens and you see me there, I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> But you know, see people around you're like kind of looking, you know, they're like, 
you know, is that you? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, it's me. <laughs> so I have some fun with it. <laughs> Well, I, I just want to say, you know, growing up, we didn't have dolls. We had action figures, Vicky. Action, action figures. figures. <laughs> I'm a girl, though, Steve. I know. Okay? So, no. I know. <laughs> uh, well, you, well, you did mention, you know, uh, the excitement with AEW. Uh, do you feel like you have any unfinished business in wrestling? Could we possibly see you anywhere anytime soon? Uh, Absolutely. I, I miss the ring every day. And I've expressed to AEW that I would love to be a part of it, you know, and it's just timing and what, you know, what they want to, what they're ready for. And, you know, they're the ones that are running the show. All I can do is say, Hey, I love your product. I, I love the, the superstars. I love what y'all stand for and I've expressed it, you know, and it's in God's hands. I mean, all I can do is pray about it and believe in it and, you know, whatever happens, but I'm keeping myself busy, you know, while I, um, while I wait for an answer. <laughs> well, I'm glad you said that this is how the the business works here it's the perfect segue but um you just mentioned you're keeping busy so what is vicky guerrero doing when she's not podcasting and when she's not being a part of wrestling what are some of your passions outside of the wrestling world you know right now i'm writing my autobiography about eddie life with eddie and life after eddie and um we're almost getting ready to finish the proposal to go to new york and sell the book um, I have a great publisher and a great editor and a literary agent, and they're working really hard and they make a great team for me. So um, my story is, uh, you know, Eddie got to write his book. And so I really wanted to show my side because I think there's a lot of people out there that live with people that had drug abuse and alcoholism issues and raising, you know, kids and being a single parent. Um, I really have a lot to say because that life meant so much to me and how I survived. So to, um, you know, for my book, I'm just, I'm talking about the great days with Eddie and the dark days. And even my girls are just real big supportive, you know, because there's kids too that are involved in this kind of life that happens, you know, with a, a person that's going through their issues. So it's, it's about survival and, you know, sharing my story and giving a little piece of knowledge for someone else to know, hey, you know, survival is possible love can you know be recreated again and family can be reunited and i think that's really important for me to share oh, definitely uh now yeah. also uh, on the uh, other stuff that you're doing i understand you filmed uh your first short film this weekend with echo films anything oh, you can kind guys. of tell us so? <laughs> we're doing yeah. our research see we're, uh, yeah thanks <laughs> um yeah i just finished my uh, filming a short film with echo films here in, in houston and i loved it <clears throat> and i just i i've been taking acting for about a year and a half now um aside from wwe you know when you work there when i when i left there i said i really want to continue my work in front of the camera so um i've been working on my craft and I just got a agent in Albuquerque, New Mexico, who's um, getting me ready to submit for auditions. And, you know, so that's always something I'm doing during the week is taking acting classes. And um, I, I, go, I do comic cons and conventions. And there's also the wrestling shows that call and book me. So I do those. And then I do crafts. So I'm always in, I'm, I'm getting ready to go to a farmer's market in two weeks and sell my wine bottles. Uh, I, I paint, I scrapbook, I I make Reese. I, I'm just a, a homebody too, so <laughs> I, I kind of do it all. <laughs> That's incredible. Now, we know that you said that you're not quite done with the wrestling business yet, and we're very happy to hear that. Um, when you're watching wrestling, there's so much of it these days. There's, you know, we've mentioned the two big names, you know, there's, but there's also Ring of Honor, there's NWA, there's Impact, there's Independence all around. Is there anybody out there that you that you see right now that you think deserves the managerial services of Vicky Guerrero? Is there anybody you have your eyes on? I, I have my eyes on everybody. How's that? <laughs> you know, um, I asked WWE. I actually asked them two or three times in the last three years. You know, if I could come back, I didn't get an answer. And I, you know, I respect them. You know, they have, you know a great roster that they're working with. Um, WWE was my home, you know, that's where my comfort zone is, you know, to be there. But, you know, NWA, I love their product. I'm a big fan. I actually interview a lot of their superstars, you know, for their show. Um, and then there's Impact, which is pretty cool too, you know. So um, even if New Japan wanted something, you know, which I know the language barrier is a little different, but I'm open to anything. I, I miss the ring every day. And whether it's behind the scenes or in the ring, 
or you know managing someone it's all in my in my heart so if I ever got offered anything i would be i would be open to listen perfect yeah uh, well, Vicki, uh, we, we thank you so much for joining us tonight. I want to tell everybody out there, though, uh, go on Google, ex- Google, excuse me, the Vicky Guerrero Show. Subscribe to it on Apple, Spotify, all the podcast platforms. Get out there. Make sure uh, you, you let her know uh, you're subscribing to the show. Uh, also, I think fans can uh, follow you on VickiGuerrero.net and follow you on Twitter at Vicky Guerrero. Did I miss anything? Anything else where fans can keep up with you? Um, Instagram is Guerrero underscore Vicky. I have a website that's uh, VickyGuerrero.net, and it has my podcast and also merchandise. And uh, I'm going to be at WrestleCon in April. Are y'all going to be there? Yeah, uh, right around the corner from where I work, so I'll, I'll be stopping in. Oh, wonderful. So I'm raffling off a piece of Eddie's work because I also vo- I also volunteer in San Antonio, Texas for the Salvation Army for the Family Emergency Shelter. Wow. So every year I raffle something and that money goes to the proceeds of the families. That's something else I did. I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. Well, that's, that's great. I know all the fans will be interested. Thank you, guys. Y'all, are, y'all have been so much fun. And thank you. I'm honored to be on your show. All right, once again, Vicky Guerrero, guys. Check out, excuse me, the Vicky Guerrero show uh, on all Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Player, whatever. It's, it's out there. Google it. Excuse me, the Vicky Guerrero show. Uh, it was great talking to her. Great having her on. Hope we have her again. But, guys, uh, a crazy week. There's been a lot of stuff happening, though. And I, w- I want to vent a little bit because, you know, guys, uh, I like to try to prepare for shows. I'm always preparing. I like to prepare. I want to I want to know what's going on, see what's going on, but at my at my stage in life, I can't watch every show, man. Raw, SmackDown, AEW, NXT, uh Impact, there's just so much so much wrestling all week. So little time to catch up. You got to pick your poison. Are you going to pick the green pill, pick the red pill? What matrix are you diving into? So there's just so much stuff. So it's like a rarity where we just get to sit back, relax, Shoot the shit, as the the kids say it, or people used to say, uh, and just just generalize and talk about it. Because Cooter, I'll tell you what, I was trying to do some research because mm. being a podcast in 2020 is very difficult. Now, we are. When did we start? Like 2014, 2015. I mean, we've been on the, we've been going for a little bit now. So I mean, we're vets, I could say, of the business of podcasts, and they've been nothing but doubled and tripled and quadrupled and whatnot over the past few years. And like our name says it, there's, you know, we're another wrestling podcast. And Cooter, I was doing research, JB, I was doing some research, looking online, trying to see what people are doing. And I'll tell you, man, it's the same old show, different name on everything. Everybody, I mean, everybody's running down the same show. Everybody's trying to keep up with the, the latest rumors and news and gossip and stuff. It's like... You know, I don't know. It's the same everywhere. But how could we be different today? It's the same rambling It's the same thing. It's it's kind of the same rambling everywhere. Kind of. (laughs) But but, but here, how could we take this (laughs) and just move away from it? Because, I mean, there was stuff that I tried looking what we could talk about today. But I just want to, like, throw it out the window. Maybe, I don't know, let's ask each other questions about things. What? How can people get to know us a little bit more or something? I'm just trying to. That's perfect. I'm going to stir this shit right now. Hey, aren't we supposed to have another pay-per-view? Is it this week or next week in Saudi Arabia? The 24th. Uh, It's the Superstars Greatest Royal Rumble Survivor Series is happening. (laughs) (laughs) Superstar Showdown is happening because they probably realize they don't want to have the Greatest Royal Rumble again right after the Royal Rumble. Because then it's like, what are we here in America getting? We're, We're getting the mediocre Rumble? I want the Greatest Rumble, baby. I'm paying for it. $9.99 Nine ninety nine a month, so yes, the the superstar showdown. Anyway, it's happening this week, and I don't Come think on, there's bro. even a card yet for it. I think we got one match or what? <laughs> Goldberg oh. and the Goldberg Fiend. Goldberg and the Fiend, and then you got uh, Ricochet and Brock Lesnar, oh, right. which is sure to be a barn burner. It's uh, I don't know, <laughs> and it's and it's like at Thursday at one o'clock in the afternoon, so make sure you're home. Prime kids. wrestling time. <laughs> Prime wrestling time. I hope they get back in time for SmackDown this time. So, oh God, well that's why you have that's when you have the return of Cena. Yes, all right. So uh, Cena comes back that and you know because he can he's a mark for himself, so he could probably fill out a, a half hour worth of talking, right? 
Probably, but you know that, that's the thing. So I'm I'm reading the dirt sheets. I love reading them. I love just seeing what people write about. And sometimes it's just so funny because it's like, they're like, oh, the Undertaker said this backstage or whatever. I'm like, no, he didn't. Who the hell did he tell this information to that you knew this was gonna go online or something? I'm like, no one said that. Stop it. These people just try to write stories and try to make us believe. But Cena, here's my dirt sheet. Here's my little interwebs thing I want to bring up with you guys. So. The rumor has it, guys, is that Cena is going to be facing Elias at WrestleMania this year. Now, here's my thing. Last year, he had the little run-in with Elias. He interrupted him, and he had the whole Babe Ruth intro. What did he did, did, didn't he do something the year before with Elias too? Somebody yeah, said, yeah, because when he called out the Undertaker to come down, and he and he wasn't going right, to. That's right. You know, he came in, and he did his entrance in the ring, and instead of the Undertaker, Elias came down and just, you know. Had a quick little That's bullshit right. uh, moment with him, and Cena threw him out, and then uh, fucking Undertaker decided he was going to come down after Cena got warmed up. Because, you know, Undertaker couldn't do like a full 15, 20 minutes, so, you know, Elias had to do the first 10 for him. <laughs> what, what, what do you think, JB? I mean, uh, it, it, two years in a row, we have an altercation at WrestleMania. Now, this year, we're having a match. Is this almost on the same level as, like, The Undertaker to where... He has a match every year. We're almost on three years now of uh, Elias and Cena altercations. Does it deserve a match? So the thing that I kind of lead my life by now, it's not always been the case, but now it's just the, the it's come, it boils down to one word, and that's purpose, right? So what is the purpose of this? We're going to have Elias and Cena three uh, you know, last year was obviously the return of the Doctor Th- Thugonomics, and before that, as Cooter mentioned, it was the the kind of filler or whatever. Is this going to help Elias at all? Is this going to help Cena at all? If not, then then it's a throwaway for me. I mean, I understand they want to kind of have mixture of of funny bits and all kinds of stuff like that, uh, which coincidentally was my nickname in high school, Funny Bits. But uh, but. Well, uh, but seriously, I just, I just, I really, really think that that's kind of something that needs to be driven home is whenever these writers are coming up and saying, Hey, we've got this great idea. It's going to be Cena versus Elias. Well, that's great. And if you've got like a month or two worth of story to go beyond this, then yeah, let's have at it. But Mm. I, I don't even care if it fails after that two months, at least they gave it a go. This is just, this feels like it's lazy. And I'm not, again, I love wrestling. But if I was the one with that pen and I was sitting down at a desk, I wouldn't just have this one-off thing and then forget about it. And I feel like that's what it is. Because unless Elias gets the rub from this, unless Cena magically passes the torch over to Elias after this or whatever, then to me, it really just is, it's kind of a throwaway. And again, I mean that with the most um, honest and and care for professional wrestling it's something that i've loved for over 30 years now and i'm not just saying that i want to be the writer or anything like that i just think that they should be careful with with this we see it all over the place you know i I feel like poor elias because he's a guy who's in incredible shape uh, I'm not saying he he's not he's not a bad worker. He's a he's a good wrestler. I think if they gave him more time to actually wrestle and be that wrestler, granted, I love that he can play the guitar, man, but he doesn't need to be the musical act every show. You know, like let the guy you're wasting his athleticism. You're la- you're wasting his talent on not showing it. I mean, he's the he's the honky tonk man of the new millennium, if you will. You know, he he can play it. He can sing it. Uh, and he can wrestle too. So I, if, like you said, if they start building it up maybe this week, and actually give them some kind of a decent program, I hope you do give that rub to Elias because he can do more work than just playing the guitar. And I hopefully they show because I mean, all in all, he's still a good character to have around. He can do it all. He can walk the walk and he can talk the talk. You know what pisses me off is that there's nobody here that's disagreeable with. To piss me off. <laughs> okay? Like, I, I can't agree with JB more unless uh, unless Cena gives him the rub, you know, does the job for him because he's basically gotten the better of Elias the past two years in a row. And it, it's like CM Punk losing to Brock Lesnar. Uh, who's going to be on Raw the next day? 
it's punk and Brock Lesnar is going to be on vacation. Oh, that's great. Well, why doesn't he show up on Monday instead? And I'll just stay home hmm. because there's just no point to, ha- I mean, is it a, is it a nice, is it a good moment? Sure, but it doesn't do anything for anybody in the end. And again, if they're going to build it up and it's going to be like a little bit of a feud for that's great. I remember before I was on this show, you guys had an interview with Callahan. All right. Mm -hmm. And I remember him talking about some of the up and comers and and Elias was one of the ones that he mentioned as a standout. You're going to love this guy. And like you said, Credo. He can work. He is incredible in the ring. I really enjoy his style. He keeps himself in good shape. It's very, you know who he almost reminds me of? It's He, he reminds me of Billy Gunn in a way where he's in such good shape. I'm not saying he's the same size as Gunn, but he's in such good shape. But the way they dress him, you really can't tell. Mm. You know what I mean? And so he's he really is that total package. He can talk. He can work. He's got a great look. What the fuck are you going to have him job to John Cena for? Because it's WrestleMania season and John's shovel's a little bit dusty. He's going to have to knock it off, to knock the dust off, shine that motherfucker up. And just so we can start, he's starting to dig now because it's been a while. <laughs> you know, we haven't seen him in a while. So he's going to have to dig and then put the fucking dirt on top. I don't know. That's too much work for him. That's a lot of work to do for a WrestleMania match. It's funny how we've come full circle with Cena because I remember the promos leading up. uh, Was it for 29 and before that, too, trying to get him to do a match with The Rock? How he was making fun of The Rock. He's only live via satellite and this and that, and he's never going to (laughs) leave. And, I mean, I wish him all the success in the world, but, I mean, you pretty much turned into what you were making fun of The Rock for, which is all right. I mean, it's – but that's what it's become. So if he is coming back – Cena doesn't need the win. I mean, he had a no. great, a great spotlight at last year's WrestleMania. This is where you have really have to give Elias that spot of beating Cena at WrestleMania because you've put so much energy behind making Elias a name. Uh, just what he does, you know. There's nothing negative about it, and it's just uh, at the end of the day. I mean, I hope it's I hope it's maybe not more than just a rumor, but I hope we get something good out of this, right? J- JB, a purpose. Hopefully, there's a purpose behind this. Uh, but one guy who has had no luck, I feel like, during WrestleMania season. Oh my God, this poor motherfucker! Is Samoa Joe? Uh, last year it was like a miracle that he worked it, and then he ended up squashing Ray in a match where he'd even have like a decent length of a match. Uh, but this year uh, it's out that a Samoa Joe injured himself while filming a commercial of all places. It was a WWE commercial (laughs) shoot last week. Joe hit his head during a bad table break as they were filming a stunt. Uh, It said it's unconfirmed at this point, but sources tell us Joe could be out of action for a considerable amount of time. The dude just returned after months on the sideline from breaking, what, his thumb or his finger or something like that, and... He was doing commentary, which was great, and then finally returns and then gets injured on a commercial shoot right in WrestleMania prime season. Ugh. Bending. Again? Listen, I I think that obviously it's a huge loss. Mojo is really just can't catch a break since he's made it to the the main roster, we'll say. But um, I want to go back a little bit to what you were talking about with Elias and I think about it every week. You know, we we talk about how much wrestling there is out there. We have Raw that's three hours. We have SmackDown that's two hours. We've got NXT, which is, you know, a considerable amount of time as well. And I feel like that really what the problem is, is that right now we know every day they're adding new people to their roster. WWE is adding worldwide. They're adding people to NXT. You know, we just saw that. The Rock's daughter is starting down there and so on and so forth. But there's a point when you just have too many people to be on the shows. And that's what's happening with your, you know, your Elias's and, and your Sami Zayn's and all these people that, you know, we just haven't seen for a while. And why is that? That's mainly because WWE right now is holding on to as much talent as they can because they don't want AEW to have anybody or Ring of Honor or Impact or whoever. And I really don't think that that helps the talent, and I don't think it helps the com- the company because you, then you find the talents getting on social media and talking about how they want to be released, but they uh-huh. can't be released sure. and all this stuff. And I almost think that they would be better if they just sign these guys and gals to contracts and say, listen – 
we're signing you. You're not going to do anything for a while, but we're going to bring you up when the, you know, when the time's right. But basically you're just, you know, you're here until we need you. And it's, it's tough to hear that. And it's tough to even think that, but I think that would help because then you wouldn't have all these people that are constantly working all the time and they get stale and they get old. And that's when the fans like, Hey, imagine how much more people would like Roman Reigns if they only saw him, you know, eight times a year. Yeah. Like that, that gives you a chance to bring, you know, your Samoa Joe's up or your Shinsuke Nakamura's or whatever. And I just think that that's another thing that would keep wrestling fresh. There's so many good people that, that could be getting a chance and an opportunity, but there's just, in, in even with that amount of wrestling, there's just not enough time to showcase everybody. And he's right. What's crazy about it is me and Cologne have always had this argument when NXT was one hour. The thing that we loved about it was, was that you weren't saying, seeing the same guys every week. You, know, you, you would go maybe two, three weeks before you saw that top guy again because they're, they would spread, spread it around. Even the up-and-comers got to get a shot. People got to gotta have an enhancement talent match. You know, there's got to be some type of main event, whether it's, you know, top tier guys or, 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 or a blood feud or something, whatever was going on. It made you look forward to when you were going to see some of your favorites because you didn't know if you were going to see them every week. So that's, you know, it's a reason to tune in. Oh, man, my favorite's going to be on in two weeks. Build that anticipation. Build that storyline. Yeah. And, you know, with all these shows, like I said, to where it's it, it's so much work to try to watch everything. But uh, with all these shows, it, it's like they need that kind of a formula. I mean, Raw is three hours, right? Every Ugh. week, you don't need to have that same kind of people. You have all that roster to where this week, you know, you have – X, Y, and Z, these guys. Then next week you have A, B, and C on, and then go back to the following week to X, Y, and Z. You know, spread it out, do it every other week or something, because that would probably be a better formula instead of, you know, uh, the Messiah, the Monday Night Messiah every Monday, every Monday. And then, and then after a while, it's just like, all right, I just, where's everybody else? And, you know, I think it brings up even a greater point, because I think we mentioned last week or whatnot to where we're in that WrestleMania season, right? So what's what's after WrestleMania? The Monday Night Raw after WrestleMania. And with that, that what made it so special is because, ooh, who's going to show up? Who, who's going to move up? Who's going to, you know? And now it's like, well, not really. I don't know anybody because now, you know, NXT is its own show. There's no real surprises. And, you know, look at this. Look at the last time they moved somebody up. And they made a big deal about it. It was, uh... Uh, it was like, oh, it was Heavy Machinery, Lars Sullivan, EC3, Lacey Evans, or something like that as a yep. group. And fucking EC3, man, this guy was number one on Impact. He had such great what charisma, whatever he's doing. WWE signs him, brings him in, and they don't even use him. It doesn't matter. That motherfucker couldn't work worth a shit anyway. Lars Sullivan was too busy hiding his past in the closet. Wink, wink. Uh, it, there's just a lot of stuff. So, you so know what's funny? Out of all the people that got over that we just talked about, as good as Lacey Evans is, it's fucking Otis. Out of all those people, he's over more than anybody. That's it. Otis? He's a character, man. That's it. Oh, he's great. But, what's, it, but what was funny about that, too, is like you had a plan. You moved these guys off of NXT, especially EC3. He was on there for a few months, I felt like. And then he comes – like you had a plan to put him on Raw – but you didn't do anything with him. Why even move him over if you weren't going to use him like full time or just something? And I, I don't know if I think it was he injured or something I heard or, no, you know, yeah, he, he, somebody had to watch catering. Here's the thing. Had to watch catering. No, I, and I'll be honest with you. When you look at NXT, NXT is what out of the three brands? It's the professional wrestling brand. EC3 is not. So what's the perfect move for him? Raw. The show where all they do is talk. Three hours worth of Raw. I felt like I watched nothing but promo after promo. I would love to know how much in ring time we had on Raw this week. <laughs> no, and you know because it, it just seemed like fucking promos, bud. That's it, and it goes back to what JB said too: is that you have all this talent, and they're not using them all. You know what I mean? Like uh, for for any fan of EC3, though, like you know he got moved up, and then you don't even see him anymore. It's like, uh, w w what's going on or, or whatnot? And so. <laughs> You know, all these guys. He's a fan of EC3. Hey, man. I think you guys are forgetting that that he was sent over by Dixie. So that's really why 
he's kind of infiltrating. You know, he's still on a mission from Impact. And uh, no, I, you know, I, all these people that are are you know you feel like they're getting left, you know, left behind, and they get a, a big build up. You know, the the night after WrestleMania, someone gets a call up, and then you know, a couple months, what's happened to him, you know, and it's rare. I would almost, you know, I see WWE moving more into this, you know, they want to be taken seriously. So they're, they have these shows like sport, you know, like kind of like sports center. They have these, uh, you know, the, they're bringing in people like the Ryan Satins, you know, they're doing these things to kind of make it this real feel to it. And what would be more real than to have these people that, you know, Brock Lesnar, when he's not on Raw, we don't know what he's doing. But if he would check in via satellite and say, listen, I'm Brock Lesnar. I don't need to be at Raw. Like, that's not what I'm getting paid to do. I'm here on the beach. Uh, you all know my wife. Like, why would I be there whenever I could be? <laughs> like, like, that's the sort of thing. It's a way to keep things going and yeah. keep things fresh. Keep, keep that Brock Lesnar in the back of your mind without having to you know, make him be there and wrestle. And like, you know, the same thing with Seth Rollins. How long is it going to be before we know that the authors of pain or Murphy or whatever is going to turn on him? Because that's the, that's the cycle. That's the circle that, you know, we have, we have, we get a, a strong leader. He starts a faction, the faction turns on him. And then that, you know, that's how it goes. So I would love to just see some more, creative ways to get this done and again i don't think it's the wrestlers that are doing this i really don't because i've heard that a lot of wrestlers kind of do this sort of thing that we're doing right now on on plane rides and car rides they're they're fantasy booking just like we are and speaking of that after watching the the match at takeover with with keith lee the only thing that i could think about is how much I want to see a Walter Keith Lee match. Like <sighs> someone's like literally going to put their hand through someone's chest. It's going <laughs> to be ridiculous. And that's the kind of thing that I can't wait. And that's what, you know, right now you don't see Walter because he's on the UK show. Like we don't really see him that much. So that's why I think it's so special. Like a Walter's or, wow. or like that's something that we can look forward to. And I think that's really where it's gone downhill is that we, we don't have, it's almost like we have our own control because anytime that we think of something, it, we can watch it because that's what WWE is doing. They're just putting out content, content, content. But I think back in the day when we all watched it and really liked it, it was because you know, we didn't see the Undertaker fight every night. We would see it, you know, every other every other show. Or Hulk Hogan only showed up right before a big match or whatever. And I think that it's just overexposure is really one of the biggest issues in, in the wrestling business today. And that's crazy because you you bring up Walter, who is literally one of my favorites, and to see the idea of him and Keith Lee just gives me chills. What's that Gorilla Monsoon saying? Please. The irresistible force oh. <laughs> meets the immovable object. That's what that is. And what's crazy? <laughs> Would you stop? That's what I was going to say. <laughs> Would you stop? <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> and what's crazy is you'd think you would see him on the NXT show more, especially after that. Uh, the was it the Blackpool show where they had uh, uh, Undisputed Era versus Imperium, and yeah. they gave Imperium that big win, and they did it with, with uh, a man down. They had one of their guys injured, so they went at it four against three, and uh, you know Walter had that big win, and it, he, he, I haven't seen him since. I know, and that's crazy yeah. to me. And he's such a talented guy. And I couldn't imagine if they didn't have the NXT UK show because then it's like trying to fit all those guys within NXT or SmackDown or Raw, you know, it's like you can't buy the universe, Vince. It's like they just need to figure out their formula and fix it uh, because, I mean, there's just so many unhappy guys, too, I hear about, you know, like the Revival. They haven't re-signed. They're trying to find a way out of their contract so they can move on and whatnot, too, and it's just like 
it's just that's what's happening with everybody because now that they have other options and the, the world of wrestling is such a great landscape right now to where people can pick and choose and make more money almost what it seems than uh, at in the WWE where they can make it more money on the road doing other shows then why not you know so it's going to be but an just, interesting year though pretty much but just think about that too okay so this is listen I'm not trying to be an armchair booker or anything like that but the AEW Impact, Ring of Honor, all of those people can learn a lesson from what I'm about to say. And I'm not saying it like that I know everything, but WWE, as they start to lose talent, the revival, Luke Harper, and so on and so forth, okay, what are they going to do with them in the next place that they go? Oh. So AEW has this crazy responsibility now. They're going to get someone like Luke Harper, Brody Lee, whatever you want to call him. And what do you do with him? And don't just bring him in and say, "Oh my God!" Like the twentieth man is, of the inner circle. <laughs> this is this is you know. So <laughs> I know I understand that they they want to get these people in there, and you know the revival versus the Bucks has been this big tease forever. You know this is, and so we want to get it, but how do we get there? And how do we get there without doing it on the first night? Because yeah. I don't want to see that. Like. Just remember whenever, like, the third man for the NWO, like, that sort of stuff was happening. There was so much anticipation. And, like, the whole thing whenever the Tyson and Austin, I mean, I can still hear JR and, and, and you know, Tyson and Austin. <laughs> like, But, like, like, these things didn't happen overnight. Like, you know, we, we built up for those people who had, had been born under a rock or whatever – who didn't know Mike Tyson, you better damn sure believe that by the time Tyson and Austin happened, those people knew that Tyson was the baddest man on the planet. Like that, that happened so often. And, you know, I just, it's a warning to any promotion that brings in these people. Yes, they're great talent and they want to be there and they want to work, but you've got to give them something. You've got to make it real and make, because if not, they're going to be in AEW for, 15 weeks and then they're going to say oh god i was making i was doing this in wwe <laughs> yep. but i was making more money doing this so like you know this whole thing it's it goes back to the the i don't even care right now that potentially eric rowan has a spider in that cage that doesn't bother <laughs> me as long as there's a payoff for it you know yeah, yep. <laughs> like this is again how long has he been carrying this thing around good for him good for him and i hope that it means something when it's over. But that's my word to the the wise is whenever you get a hold of a talent like Luke Harper, who I think is immensely talented, yes. and and I like the revival too, but just make sure that you're not throwing away a huge opportunity with these people. That's all I ask. That's all I ask. No. There's more to it than just that, Credo. Yeah. Who the fuck outside of the Bucks do you want to see – the revival wrestle in AEW because as much as I, I want to shit on a lot of things that I don't like about e AEW, like the women's division, like the tag division, uh, like a lot of things uh, outside of the Bucks. Okay. Who do we have as tag teams? The best friends Lucha brothers. Got, and that's it. E e e but that's the thing. That's just, that's, you know, the Mexican Young Bucks. That's what that is to me. And it's it's a contrast of styles. When you look at the Revival, you look at a, you know, a very well-polished team, ground game, no flips, just fists. I get it. I love it. Um, it's it's a different type of wrestling that they're used to where the Bucks are just, you know, high spots that, that don't mean shit because – what well, what was the one thing that we saw? It was like a Canadian destroyer off the top rope through a table that we saw, or some shit it like that. Broke his it was neck, just, yeah. Yeah, and I'm like, oh, and the guy kicks out. What <laughs> the fuck, Bubba? <laughs> really? What are you serious? Are you fucking kidding me? It, it, it's just mind boggling. Uh, SCU is a great team. The best friends. Can you imagine Orange Cassidy coming in? from the best friends in front of the revival, he would be on the ground before he even got his hands in his fucking pockets. Stop it. I don't care about that tag division. And 
they can maybe milk it and have a good storyline with the Bucks, but after that, then what? There really is nothing that I really want to see. You know, it all goes back to formulas. You know, like we were saying before, with the whole over, you know, abundance of talent. You know, I, they really need a formula and stick with it to where you always have to have six tag teams on each show, right? And this goes for any, any <clears throat> whatever. So like Raw, SmackDown, anybody. So you always have six tag teams, right? And then let's say this tag team breaks up fine, but you're going to have to have a f- who's the replacing ta- – like who's going to make up the new tag team? Or, or so – and I mean it goes with like cruiserweights or, you know, heavyweights, main event guys. Like you have these main events. Like you're going to always have like ten main event guys or something like that. Or, five, you know, whatever the math formula is, make it. Stick to it. And then, you know, look at the, look at the wall. Like this week, bo- these two teams are on. We don't need them next week. Next week, we put these two teams on. And then, so then you're making this one week of trying to fit everybody on TV into like a whole month to where everybody kind of gets on and everybody gets a break and everybody gets times. And, I don't know, and even doing the live via satellite stuff, just something. There just needs to be a formula. And sometimes I think, it, you know, get stuff gets in the way of, well, we got to keep this guy on because it's for Mania or, or, or this and so on. And I don't know. I think at the end of the day, the guys know what they're doing. They just need a better mathematician they need a better booker i guess i don't know they need something but uh either i way. have to i have to say this and i wish i could take credit for it but i was listening to another another wrestling podcast um i was listening to 83 weeks and you know yeah. we all know that tony khan has has billions really so if this doesn't happen i'm going to be super disappointed because he's got the money to make it happen how amazing would it be if we start to get teases that the revival is coming to AEW only to find out that they are being managed and led by none other than Jim Cornette? <laughs> Jim Cornette could be their manager. Oh, and my God. Imagine how much people would – I mean, it would be molten hatred because – all he's done is just hate on AEW forever. And yes. he came in. I mean, and that's the kind of thinking that we need. Is yeah, that's what that you need in pro wrestling, thing. yes. And, I mean, that right there could – I'm not saying that they're going to they're gonna beat WWE, uh, you know, ever. Just because it, it's an established it's, – it's Coca-Cola. It's the Yankees. It's, you know, it's a legacy. But that's the kind of thinking that turns – people who are casual fans of AEW into full fans of AEW. And I think that that is a very important thing to think about too, is how, you know, if we had, uh, you know, Steve, you're the only one that has children that we know about, but um, no. Ouch. What, I'm, what, I'm, <laughs> what I'm saying is, is your kids will watch WWE because you watch WWE. You know what I'm saying? Like yep. right now, Who's going to watch AEW after this this group of marks die from, you know, not having sex or whatever? So um, <laughs> that's what I'm concerned about is AEW's legacy in the sense of, you know, who are they getting to really connect with the product right now? And uh, that goes for all the other places. I mean, it doesn't take too much. I, I always hear that being a fan of wrestling in most wrestling places is almost frowned upon. And I believe that that's really what they're missing is people who are fans. That's it, man. Well, with that said, guys, uh, we had an incredible chat about nothing. It almost felt like, but it was about everything. Uh, we didn't even have it planned. I loved it. Like, curb your enthusiasm, you know, wrestling. in a wrestling podcast. Holy <laughs> shit. It was pretty, did we, did we get sufficient pretty, praise? pretty good. Did we get sufficient praise? Did we get sufficient praise? It's uh, it, it's it's what dreams are made of here in the podcast world, guys. Uh, like I said, we started off, and I didn't have a plan, but we ended up having this incredible show today. Uh, what's the secret? What's the secret sauce, JB? I think the secret sauce is just like I said. This show was great because this was a first time thing. The three of us getting together and chatting. And now I'm going to disappear back into parts unknown for <laughs> God knows how long. And then you're going to bring me back someday. And, uh, you know, no, I, I think that, I think that it's really important for us to kind of take a step back sometimes. Like if you start getting frustrated with the product, then don't watch it one week, you know, and, and absence does grow or make the heart grow fonder. Yeah. And, uh, I think that 
you know, re- rekindle that love for professional wrestling. Go see an independent show. Go uh, watch an old DVD, you know, those round circle CDs that you used to put in your TV. And uh, maybe watch something uh, with, with, you know, grab some friends and go watch something on the network or whatever. But remember why you love this crazy ass business. You know, it's uh, it's something unlike anything else. And uh, it's it's always going to be there. And we're always going to watch it, no matter how much we complain about it on the Internet. But I think that that's the uh, important thing. That's true, man. I mean, you can literally watch anything, and there's so much great television out there. And as much as I love professional wrestling, sometimes you just got to take a step back. I, I, I watched a lot of wrestling this week, even though I felt like I didn't watch a lot of wrestling because I watched a lot of other things on top of it. Hmm. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's necessary. Sometimes it's like, I just need my private space, bitch. I, I need you to just get out of my room for like, a day two days i don't want to see you bitch i love you but i don't want to talk to you right now i'll come i'll come back i swear i'm not gonna cheat on you it's uh but- it's, it's almost as if you read it on a hallmark card at perfect i mean that's <laughs> <laughs> dear bitch i just need my space out of my I room just, just love you <laughs> happy valentine's <laughs> day man but that's it guys at the end of the day you got to think why you why you watch it do you love it do you hate it i know we get to nitpick and stuff and have fun with that but uh why you watching something that you hate enjoy it or listen to it uh but thanks for listening to us another wrestling podcast.com i want to see some of those likes follows subscribe to us on whatever you're listening to us uh right now on um, leave a review that always helps uh, and all that fun stuff, guys. I think uh, till next week. Roses are red. Violets are blue. Sometimes I just don't want to be around you. Don't tug your peckers, bitches. <laughs> <laughs>